Mateo at Hemato. Yeah, I, yeah. Oh. oh, oh, sorry about that. I, I, I have a habit of slipping back into the Planko language. <laughs> it's good to finally meet you in person. I'm Bernard, although I insist you call me Bernie. The only person who calls me Bernard is my wife. <laughs> and even then, only when I've tracked elephant dung into the carpets. <laughs> As you know, I own several zoos, but I always like to show people the ropes here at my home. This is the first zoo I ever opened, and a source of great pride for me. And prides, thanks to a lion breeding program we ran in the 80s. <laughs> but we're in the middle of a big renovation, and that's where you come in. Sadly, our old contractor had to retire after developing a fur allergy. Poor devil kept sneezing his dentures into the lion habitat. So, it's up to you to finish everything off. Don't worry, though. I'm not completely throwing you into the deep end. My head keeper, Nancy Jones, will be lending a helping hand. Oh, she's a hard worker. And she'll expect you to be, too. But I'm sure you'll get along like a house on fire, or even better, <laughs> one that isn't on fire. Less shouting that way. <laughs> Hello there. From that rosy, fresh face of yours, I'm guessing you're Bernie's new hire. Good. Now, I hope you're ready to ditch your diploma, because we're about to get really hands-on. But before we begin the real work, how about we familiarize you with the zoo by learning how to fly around it and visiting some of our beautiful animals? We'll start by popping over and having a look-see at the grizzly bears in their habitat. Did you know that grizzly bears, also known as Ursus arctos horribilis, can hibernate for up to seven months a year? <laughs> oh, but then again, given the chance, I think a lot of people would do that too. <laughs> Select one of the bears and you'll bring up its information panel. See now, this is a fantastic way to get a close look at your animals. You can also get this view of an animal by simply double-clicking on it. Okay, when you're ready, let's pop over to the other side of the zoo and take a look at the lions. I've marked their location for you to find. Panthera Leo Leo, or the West African lion to you and me. Lions are the most social of the big cats, and there can be as many as 40 lions in a pride, although prides of that size are pretty rare. As Bernie would say, those lions are awesome, which is precisely why I handle the training instead these days. Anyway, how about we get started on those objectives? Come on, let's head over to an empty habitat and see what needs doing there. As you can see, it's a lovely space for animals, but it's missing a certain something. Well, two somethings. Warthogs. <laughs> so I'd like you to adopt a pair of them. To adopt animals, we need to open the animal market, which is in the animal trading section. There we are, a pair of perfectly splendid warthogs for our zoo. Just click on them and select Adopt from the side menu. Normally, the animal exchange would be full of animals, but I've emptied out the market while you learn how it works. <laughs> the last thing I need is you accidentally ordering a dozen elephants. When you adopt an animal, it's automatically placed in the trade center, where they're held until you're ready to move them into their habitat, which, as it happens, you are. So how about you move them into their new home? 
When you ask for an animal to be moved into a habitat, your caretakers will go to the trade center, collect your animal, and deliver them to your selected habitat. I've marked the trade center's location, so let's go and watch the caretakers in action. Well, as you can see, those caretakers don't hang about. They'll move those animals to their destination as fast as possible. Of course, normally we'd have to place the animals into quarantine before moving them into a habitat, but I am assured by a person of good standing that these warthogs are in the very rudest of health. Right, let's get the warthogs' habitat finished up so we can keep them nice and happy. You see, each animal in the zoo has an overall welfare statistic, basically how happy they are. And that overall welfare statistic is itself comprised of four different areas. Nutrition, social health, habitat, and enrichment. Luckily, if you select an animal, you'll bring up their animal welfare information panel, which we saw earlier, where you can see how they're doing. That way, you'll know exactly what areas need to be addressed. Don't worry if that's a lot to remember. You can always check the Zoopedia for more information. Let's start by making sure we're taking care of the warthog's nutrition welfare. To do this, we'll need to place a food station and a drinking station. Now, each animal requires a different type of feeding station. And for the warthogs, it's a small feeding trough. So let's add one of those and a water bowl. Animals also require stimulation to keep them happy. Let's add a lovely mud bath for the warthogs to roll around in. <laughs> that bath will count towards their enrichment welfare, specifically their toy enrichment welfare. Oh, nice work. You've got a knack for this, I see. Now, our contractor had to leave in a hurry, so this place is in a feral state. Unfinished thingamajigs and what's-its all over the shop. But the first thing we need to finish is the ostrich habitat. It's over near the hippos. Oh, before we actually start building our ostrich habitat, Let's pause the game. Just click the pause button in the bottom right corner. Ah, that's more like it. A quick break. Sometimes it's a good idea to pause the game whilst you're doing something which requires your concentration, because it'll stop the zoo spinning out of control while you're looking the other way. Let's keep the game paused while we get this ostrich habitat built. Okay. Job number one here is to add a habitat gate before we complete the barrier. Every habitat needs a habitat gate. After all, how else would the keepers get in and out? <laughs> Just make sure it's hooked up to the path so the keepers can reach it.
That's more like it. A quick break. Sometimes it's a good idea to pause the game whilst you're doing something which requires your concentration, because it'll stop the zoo spinning out of control while you're looking the other way. Let's keep the game paused while we get this ostrich habitat built. Okay, job number one here is to add a habitat gate before we complete the barrier. Every habitat needs a habitat gate. After all, how else would the keepers get in and out? <laughs> Just make sure it's hooked up to the path so the keepers can reach it. Right! Let's complete the perimeter barrier so we can adopt us some ostriches. I've marked out an area for you to use, so I'd like you to finish off the perimeter using the brick barrier. Good work! Remember, before you can place animals in any habitat, it has to have a full loop of connected barrier. Now, you've probably noticed that guests can't actually see into this habitat at the moment. At least not without a stepladder. <laughs> but seeing as they're banned, I'd like you to select a piece of barrier and swap out the brick for a glass barrier, so the guests can see in. There we go. Adding in more windows gives guests even more opportunities to see the animals in a habitat. It's always best to make sure the guests can get a good view into a habitat from the path they're walking on, because it makes them happy, and because this would be a pretty terrible zoo if they couldn't. The last thing we need to do is to add a donation box. You see, when guests enjoy the view of an animal, they'll make a donation. Just make sure you put them in easy to reach places like near a viewing point. Donation boxes are one of the main sources of income for the zoo, so make sure you remember them. Now, before we adopt our ostriches, you should click the play button. After all, if the game's paused, then so are our caretakers, which will make it a bit tricky for them to deliver the ostriches, eh? By the way, as well as pausing the game, you can speed the game up by clicking on the fast forward button. It'll run everything at two times and five times faster. It can be useful, especially if you're waiting for money to accumulate or for animals to be delivered to your habitat. Personally, I use it when I'm waiting for a brew to finish. All right, you've finished the habitat, so it's high time we adopted those ostriches, don't you think? Let's get four of them in here. While we wait for them to be collected by the caretakers and brought to the habitat, you should get it ready for them. Add a suitable feeding station, water station, and an appropriate food enrichment item. It's often best to place things like enrichments and feeding stations near to the habitat perimeter, so guests can get a really good view of the animals. to see the ostriches have somewhere they can really stretch their legs. Did you know they can actually run at 43 miles per hour? Oh, heaven forbid they ever escape. <laughs> the speed camera finds alone would bankrupt us. <laughs> well, Bernie certainly seems impressed. Did he do his speed camera joke? Every time we get an ostrich. So, 
Now we've made the ostriches' lives a bit better, let's do the same for the keepers, shall we? To make it easier for the keepers to feed the ostriches and hippos, we should build a new keeper hut. Keeper huts are where the keepers prepare the food for animals, so they should be placed near to the habitats to make sure the keepers don't waste their time walking when they should be looking after the animals. You'll need to rotate the keeper hut to get it to connect up to the path. This keeper hut only has space for one keeper, but the larger keeper hut can allow multiple keepers to prepare food at the same time. Oh, but bear in mind that keeper huts and other staff facilities shouldn't be placed near to areas where there are lots of guests. Guests don't like seeing facility buildings and it can affect their happiness. Negatively. <laughs> in case that wasn't clear. Something that all facilities, shops, and a whole host of other objects need is power. And that obviously includes your newly built keeper hut. So let's place a transformer next to it, shall we? Now, the reason everything has gone blue is because you're using the power heat map. This map allows you to see what is and what isn't powered in your zoo. So, once you've placed your transformer, you can click in the bottom left to turn the heat map off. Lovely work! Now the keepers can start using the hut to prepare food, and thanks to where you've put it, they won't need to walk very far to deliver it to the ostriches and hippos. Let's get on to your next objective then. Bengal tigers. We want to adopt some, but I'm afraid there's nothing ready for them yet. Head on over to the plot of land I've marked out. It's not too far away. Righty, your next job is to build a habitat from scratch. <laughs> and concrete and glass, I expect. So, go ahead and build it. Just make sure that the habitat includes that big hole we've dug. Oh, and don't forget to add a habitat gate to the barrier. Oh, and make sure the guests will be able to see the tigers. Now, Bernie takes safety very seriously at his zoos, so we should probably make sure those tigers can't jump out of their habitat, don't you think? <laughs> the way we'll do it is by changing the height of the habitat's barrier. Okay then, you should start by double-clicking the habitat barrier, which will take you into barrier editing mode. Great, now highlight the entire perimeter of the habitat. You can do that by clicking and dragging the barrier selection tool. 
Now you've got all of the perimeter selected, you can increase the height of it by clicking and dragging the barrier height tool upwards. You'll want to make sure it reaches a height of at least 3.7 meters. Now that the habitat is in place, don't forget to put down a donation box near to your viewing areas. We need every dollar we can get. <laughs> Especially as these tigers aren't exactly eating instant noodles for lunch. Okay, that's the habitat boundary complete, the habitat gate in place, and most importantly, the tigers won't be able to jump out of it anymore. I think it's time we adopted those tigers. Whilst our trusty caretakers collect and deliver the tigers, let's take a look at preparing the habitat for their arrival. We'll start with the basics. Add a suitable feeding station for them. This time, instead of adding a water bowl, let's try something different. Some animals need a pool in their habitat so they can go for a swim, but they can also use it to drink from. All you have to do is make sure the banks of the pool have a gentle slope so they can easily get a nice, refreshing drink. There's already a pool excavated, but you still need to fill it with water. You should do that by going into terrain and selecting the water tool. Yes, that'll do nicely. Of course, just like the warthogs and ostriches, these tigers will also need some enrichment. Why don't you add some suitable toy and food enrichment items into their habitat? Okay, it's really starting to take shape. Now, the tigers will need a shelter in their habitat so they can hide from the guests, or more likely the bad weather. Although given that we're in England, you might want to think of that just as normal weather. <laughs> Go on, add a shelter to their habitat. You can either build one from various suitable bits and bobs, or if you like, just pop down the blueprint that I've already built for you. Poor dabs. 
I'm sure it can't have escaped your attention that the tigers look a bit miffed. That's because they aren't too keen on the type of terrain in their habitat. Select a tiger and bring up its information panel. Rightio, click on the terrain tab. That way you can view the terrain information and see how they feel about the different types of terrain. That'll tell you what the tigers need more of or less of in this habitat. Okay then, open the terrain editing tool, select painting, and give them some more soil. Yes, that should help with the habitat part of their welfare. Right then, all animals need plants and trees from their own biome or continent. You know, deserts, savannas, or Asia, Europe, that sort of thing. It looks like these tigers need a few more plants in their habitat. To get a perfect fit, use plants from the rainforest and temperate biomes that are native to Asia. <laughs> Although if you have to, you can get away with using just one or the other. The tigers will also want a certain amount of their habitat to be covered by those plants. To find out which plants to use and how many, select a tiger and go to the Environment tab. Now, as you can see, some of the plants currently in the habitat aren't quite right for the tiger, like the wattle bushes. You can remove them if you want. You can find all of the plants you need in the Nature section, and you can use the filters to only show the types of plants you want to see. In this case, that's plants from the rainforest or temperate biomes. They say that good fences make good neighbors. I guess that's doubly true when one of the neighbors is a Bengal tiger. <laughs> Still, those tigers look so happy that I doubt they'd leave, even if you did poke a hole in their fence. <laughs> oh, but for heaven's sake, don't test that theory. Right, let's head over to the Indian peafowls. I've been told that we need to improve their social welfare. Now then, just find one of the peafowls and select them to open their information panel. Then we can have a good gander at how they're doing. Although technically, I suppose gandering would just be for geese. 
Expand their social welfare and we can get a bit more detail. Ah, uh, now, they've clearly got plenty of space and they're not stressed, but it looks like their social group isn't quite right. So let's find out more. Click on the social tab at the top of their information panel to see what's wrong. Right, as you can see, the peafowlers need their population to be larger. To solve this little problem, you'll need to adopt three more female peafowls. Off you pop to the animal market then. work on those peafowls. I expect they'll be delivered soon. But sadly, it sounds like our snow leopard is a bit grumpy. Let's head over there and see what's wrong with her. Just like people, animals can suffer from stress if things aren't quite right. You know, like when you see someone put in the milk before the tea bag. <laughs> in the case of these snow leopards, they're a bit stressed by their lack of privacy. You can lower their stress levels by swapping out the normal glass barrier by their cave for one-way glass. It's not a cheap option, but I think they're worth the expense, don't you? This will give the snow leopards somewhere to go when they want to get away from the prying eyes of the guests. Of course, when an animal isn't in its natural biome, it's probably going to be too hot or too cold. Unsurprisingly for the snow leopards, it's, it's too hot. <laughs> Even with the terrible British weather, you should help cool it down by adding some coolers to their habitat. But let's start by opening up the temperature heat map and having a look-see at the temperature in the leopard's habitat. As you can see, we already have one cooler in there. Let's pop some more down and get as much of the habitat as chilly as we can. Luckily for us, this habitat already has power, but you'll need to make sure of that in the future. Just so you know, if any part of a habitat is powered, then the whole habitat will be powered. You can find heat maps for all sorts of helpful things, so do be sure to explore them and make good use of them. It'll take a little while for the temperature to adjust once you've added coolers or heaters, but now we've got the coolers in, we can address the leopard's terrain welfare. You see, what the leopards really want in here is snow and rock, so let's make that happen. Of that should give you a pretty good understanding of how to make animals happy. So I'd like you to go and check on all the other animals in the zoo and fix up any issues with their habitats. That'll increase the average welfare of the animals across the whole zoo. And that average welfare is a very important statistic. Now, to quickly see how all your animals are doing in the zoo, you should go into zoo management and then into the animals section. As you can see, this list shows you the animal's overall welfare. So, if something's amiss, then you can quickly pop over to them using the Locate button. Right, I'm off for a cup by while you make sure all the animals are well looked after.
Not bad at all. I think it's fair to say that you've passed the first part of your training with flying colours. There's still lots more to learn, but we'll have to head to another one of Bernie's zoos for that. If you want to grab your passport, we'll head off, shall we? Mmm, sounds like you've got the whole zoo purring away nicely. Well, purring, grunting, screaming, booming. <laughs> All the, uh, appropriate noises. I guess I was right to hire you, huh? <laughs> Don't tell her I told you, but Nancy wasn't sure you'd even last the morning. <laughs> so, we're happy this is working out. And Nancy owes me a foxy coffee. <laughs> as strange as it seems, considering we just met, when I look at you, I feel like you're the child I never had. After the one I did have, obviously. But you see, zookeeping's not for my daughter. Don't get me wrong. Emma absolutely loves animals, but she set her sights somewhat higher. Mm-hmm. Wants to save the entire planet. I'll just settle for saving a couple of species. Oh, and maybe having a type of frog named after me. 